later, I asked a clerk about that time. Had you met him before that or only afterwards? I met him only once before that. The next time he was brought to my office was shortly after my speech of the 2nd of February, when I announced to him he would be released on the 11th of February. And his immediate reaction was, no, it's too soon. And I said, Mr. Mandela, why is it too soon? He said, no, no, we need more time to prepare. <laughs> you say, Mr. Mandela, you've been in jail long enough. You will be released on the 11th. We will ne later negotiate about many other things, but this is not negotiable. Now let's negotiate about what time of the day and from which place are you going to be released. He laughed and he accepted. Uh, sometimes uh, Mr. Duclerc does not get the credit that he, he deserves. I certainly pay a, a tribute to Mr. Duclerc, but have to say that uh, Someone up there must really have been on our side or, or betting for us. Yes. Uh, because, I mean, when, when things were getting rough, I mean, after, after his release and, and, and the build-up to our first democratic election, it was one of the roughest, one of the bloodiest periods in, in, in our history. It did seem as if there was a, a third force uh, that sought to undermine the process of uh, negotiations. And yes, I, I mean, when you think of the assassination of uh, Chris Honey, it really was touch and go. If we had had anyone but someone of the stature of Mandela, it, it would have been very, very difficult to have persuaded um, people uh, in his ranks to lay down their arms. And getting people to say, it's better to talk jaw, jaw, rather than war, war. He had the stature uh, to persuade very many in his own party who thought uh, this is the wrong time uh, to want to lay down arms because uh, these, these guys are not really trustworthy.